Because the important thing is this. This is a, uh, the website for the integrated publishing toolkit used by VertNet. And the important thing to see is that we have the American Museum Bird Collection, American Museum Mammal Collection, the Biodiversity Research Teaching Collections, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There are pages and pages of collections all using this one piece of software that is managed by somebody who's really good at managing something like this, who does it for hundreds of institutions. One person, and that's only part of what she does. She's really good at her job, so this doesn't take much of her time, and she does other stuff for those institutions at the same time. She helps them to get to the point where they can put their collections online like this. So <clears throat> what we're looking at here, this is a summary page listing the collections that have been uh, incorporated into VertNet and the basic information about them. All of them are occurrence data. Uh, the large, largest number of the collections are of specimens and the remainder are observations. It tells us about the number of records and when the data were last modified and when they were last published. Every one of those, if I have a connection I'll show you. Every one of those has information about their collection in here. We call it metadata. And there, there are pages of it, if I scroll down. You can see that it tells who you're supposed to contact about various things, what the geographic coverage is. You can go here and get a pretty good idea of what that data set is all about. That should be sufficient to know whether you need to contact one of these people who's listed to find out further information. But if it isn't, or if you're an independent soul, you go right here and you download seven megabytes with all 219,000 records in it. The entire data set is right there for download. It's for download, and with it comes all of this information as well. And with it comes a document that is almost ready for publication as a data paper. Now, that means that there's a format in which you can turn this collection into a paper. Now, there's not a lot of scientific content there, but at least there's a standard way to represent collections information as if it were a manuscript. All of these data are registered with GBIF. VertNet has an agreement with GBIF and has since its very first day that every collection in VertNet will also be available via GBIF. So how does VertNet take advantage of this? These are just the data that were available for download along with their metadata. VertNet uses this. VertNet as a data portal uses the IPT to gather the information that it uses in the, the web interface where you do the searches across all of these institutions at once, even though none of them has their own server. So the big thing is how do they do that? How have we made it easy? How have we made it cost a hundred times less than it used to? It's the IPT. And I would say that it would resulted in a cultural change. Things got easier, things got more mellow. And now, we're able to publish data to VertNet, which looks a little something like That's not it. Oops. Looks a little something like this. I've already gone into VertNet because I wanted to, to look at something in particular. I don't want to give you a tour of VertNet. You can do that yourself. It's easy. It doesn't require a manual. It's that easy. But what I wanted to show here is part of the end of the puzzle. The data have gone into VertNet and I'm looking at a specific specimen that happens to be at the University of Michigan in its mammal collection. 
And I got here because I was interested in something to do with the, their mammal collection. So I got in here, and I was interested in this particular record, and then I noticed something. I noticed that there's a point in the ocean, and if I look at the details of this record, oops, Let me look at all the details of this record. There are plenty of other fields in here. So mammal specimen, it's a skeleton and a skull collected in 1937 from a place that that collection called Dahomey, which you won't find in the list of country names anymore. It's been turned into the country of Benin, and yet I saw the georeference sitting in the ocean off of the coast. It's supposed to be in Porto Novo. And these were the original coordinates provided by the collection. Plenty more information. Let me scroll down. These are the interpreted latitude and longitude with the datum, with the coordinate uncertainty in meters, and all the information about the protocol used. It was the VertNet georeferencing guidelines, and in so doing, they used the Alexander Digital Library Gazetteer. The georeference is unverified, and then we get into the taxonomy stuff. So it's very rich in information, and yet, on the map, this one. It's in the water. So clearly this collection has gone through a lot of effort to make their data complete and make it available for you. And you find this problem. Now I don't know what the species was, but I, I know that it was not marine, and I know that it's not in Benin. Those weren't meant to rhyme, they just happened to. So what I want to do is I want to tell that collection that there's a problem. In other words, I want to close the gap. Town made a nice progression of information flow where at every level there was loss. Here's a way to put some fluid back into the pipeline by the effort of those who see it to say, University of Michigan, mammal collection, I see a problem here, and tell them. Here, is the way to tell that institution that there's a problem. So we click on that and we're allowed to submit an issue on it. Now this might not seem all that exciting. Does it? Because you like to tell people when things are wrong. I'm sure. No, because I like the collections to get things right. Six of one half a dozen of another. For technical reasons, there, a login is required to be able to submit an issue. And creating the login is free. The idea here is that we've cr behind all of VertNet, we've created a system of feedback that doesn't rely on VertNet. It's generic. And any system could use it. A system such as an automatic georeferencing service could use it. So imagine taking the entire collection of the University of Michigan Museum and sending it to a service that is going to tell you when it finds something wrong with your data. It too could submit issues via this mechanism. So the important thing is not that our website has a little flag on it and that the information that is behind that flag goes somewhere that you don't know. Instead, it's important that it goes into a system that can be implemented everywhere. And the other important thing is that that system is something that the curators who are responsible monitor. It's not a website they go to every morning. It's an infrastructure that sends them email when something's wrong. Furthermore, it logs 
the information that is wrong and all the world can see it. So in principle, it hasn't been done yet, but it's a good idea. In principle, the VertNet portal could show the information about the record and it could also show what people have said about it. In other words, VertNet could become a portal for interchange about problems, problematic specimens or about inter interesting specimens and all of it's being kept in an archive that is accessible to everyone as well. An archive that the curator can use to organize all of the if feedback that they've got. They can say, okay, I'm going to label this as a taxonomy problem. I'm going to label this as a geography problem. And I'm going to prioritize it. This is a super high priority taxonomy problem. And do whatever kind of management they want on their own. Make it their own. Do as much or as little with it as they like. But in any case, give it the possibility to send issues via a simple form like this one to the data provider. If I fill out this form and send the issue to the institution, they get an email that has my title and my comments, but it also has the entire data record exactly as VertNet has it at that moment. So they get to see exactly what the problem is. And it stays with the issue for the lifetime of the issue. So this is a way to close the loop and to help to make the, the institutions have better data because more data, uh, there are more people looking at them. So this is another kind of cultural change that we're trying to put into existence. The idea then is that having made it easier to publish data, more data will become accessible through portals like VertNet and GBIF. And I don't have a graphic for it, but GBIF has published a nice graph that shows what the impact of having created this integrated publishing toolkit is. Earlier on, there was sort of a slow growth of available data, and the IPT came along, and suddenly there was a spike. Clearly, this solution had provided for a very missing gap in technology, a gap that made it an obstacle to data publication rather than making it easy. So now we're going further than that. In VertNet, the process of going from digitized data to data publication works like this. The institution either puts their working database or some export from their working database into a Dropbox folder. Dropbox is free. No one has a collection big enough that there's not enough space in Dropbox to hold its data. So, that's all they need to do. That Dropbox is shared with VertNet. VertNet knows that new data have arrived every time. There's a notification. VertNet then takes the data and working basically as I did with Moses to try and manipulate his data to make it more useful for him with the idea of turning it into Darwin Core, VertNet creates what we call migrators. They're customized from a template, a template that takes raw data and turns it into Darwin Core. So we spend a day or a few days in the process of discussion with the collection about how to make that transformation from the original into Darwin Core. And when we're done with it, what we have is a tool where we push a button or, even better still, that we can have the computer automatically run that migration whenever it's necessary, like whenever new data arrive. So we've taken the effort to understand the collection, we've taken the effort to be able to create a transition between their data and Darwin Core to be published via VertNet, and we've automated the process. Their effort is put data in Dropbox, our effort is nothing after that unless something breaks. The entire rest of it is 
automated. Well, what is the entire rest of it? When the data go through that migrator, they're not just being turned into Darwin Core, they're also being standardized in certain ways. And the standardization has to do with values in the raw data that can be reasonably understood and changed. 